Hello again, everyone. It's Kaz Beal, and this is Casual Conversations, where we talk to people who are very important to our world. Today's very special guest is Maria Garcia. She has been through a very challenging time in her life, and she has become a book author and also now found a way to transform people's lives. Welcome to Casual Conversations, Maria. Hey, Kaz. Thank you for having me. It's a pleasure. So um, you're looking wonderful today, but let me know, uh, tell us the story, a little bit background of what, what happened in your life. That was very challenging. Let me start out with um, after I finished college. I graduated college and I thought, what can I do now? Because I didn't want to start my career right away. So I finally decided on going to Germany. I went to Germany, ended up living there for two years. And then after that, I came back to New Jersey. And I thought, okay, now I'm ready to begin my career. And within six months, I had a good job. I was moving up really quickly. I was asked to become a stockbroker. I'd even taken some of my examinations towards that, and I was doing great. And then one day, it was a Sunday, we were having family lunch, as we do every Sunday at my mom's. I went there. We had a beautiful time. She is a wonderful cook. So she made everything. She made shrimp. She made everything. She made meat. Think of it, it was there. Anyway, after lunch, I went home and I was on the phone. And I started hearing, and it took me a minute to realize it was actually in my own head. And somehow I managed to get off the phone. And as soon as I did, I felt like somebody had hit me with a cast iron pan over the head. I had a tremendous headache. So I fell on my bed and my friend who was in the living room came in to check on me. He saw what was going on. So he called my mother. She got to me. She saw me. At this point, I had already vomited and I was really ill. The ambulance was called, they came, and like everybody else, they thought I had food poisoning. And frankly, I kind of did too. They ended up leaving, but I wasn't getting better. And I ended up going to the hospital with my friend, two friends actually, and my mom. And by this point, I had extreme vertigo and I couldn't walk straight. I felt like the world was going in circles. And I get to the emergency room and I, I had to actually wait in the emergency room because you know, that's what happens when you go to the emergency room, you have to wait. Right. And finally I get admitted and they run tests on me. Cat scans and everything else. And finally, somebody walks over to me and says, Miss, we think you've had a stroke. And I'm, I'm, I'm thinking in my head, okay, so much for the food poisoning theory. So Maria, how, how old were you then? That's the thing. I was actually 25 and that was my next thought. What is a stroke? I didn't know what a stroke was. Right. Yeah, who would know at that age? I mean, you're, you're young, out there, out going, having fun, and, and stroke to most people that age thinks that, well, that's like, you know, people who are way up in the age than that. So, so go, go on with your story. I'm admitted, and what I think is going to be two weeks in the hospital turns into four months. I was bedridden. I was paralyzed from the eyes down, which means I was also mute for a while. And by the time I, I went home after four months, I was still in the wheelchair. I thought I would have been running by then. I got home, I was in a wheelchair and the recovery went on from there. It was a really, really long and difficult recovery. It took about 
eight years to get to maybe 70% recovered. And I was happy. I was really happy with that because coming from my deathbed, that was a blessing. Yeah. Well, you, 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 but you had, didn't you have to learn to walk again and speak and all that? I mean, that, that must have been so difficult. Like, I mean, how did you communicate early on with anybody what you wanted? <laughs> You were trapped in a sense in your body, right? I was. I was trapped in my body. And they realized, a friend of mine realized actually, she brought me pictures of a trip we had taken together. And she realized by my eye movements that I was actually conscious. And that's when they realized, oh my God, she's actually in there. Like she realizes what's happening and hears everything. So from there, we built a system where somebody would ask me, okay, you want to say something? And I would blink one for yes or two for no. Then they would say, okay, the first letter, is it, does it begin from A to N or N to Z? And I would blink once for A to N, twice for M to Z. And that's how it would spell things out. Wow. That that that's remarkable. I mean, it's it's nice you had a friend, uh, you know, your family, did they visit you? Um because were they you said this was in Germany or you moved back? I had over? just moved back to the States. Oh, okay. So you were actually in the United States because that would have been really, really much worse if you were in another country and you're trying to deal with situation of family members and all that and uh and uh so you said it took eight years to completely kind of get back to where you know was your life was somewhat back to normal as best somewhat as you can back say to normal is the best. <laughs> as best as you could say you know but for well, much better than what it was so you know but the, it's the sort of like amazing miracle that you know you're able to transform yourself back into that and uh you know, um, so tell me about now, you know, how the book, you know, what else happened after that? I guess I, I don't want to go too far into the book and everything yet, but tell me, you know, the progression. It's such a wonderful story. When I got home after the hospital and I was in that wheelchair, the wheelchair didn't fit through any of my doorways. And that's when I graduated to using a walker. Mm -hmm. I could barely use it, but... That's what I had to do. And they, they say necessity is the mother of all learning. Well, yeah. it really is. Yeah. And then at this point, I started to lose hope because I I thought I'd be running by now. I thought everything would be okay. And I didn't realize that what a slow process this was. And I was in a deep, deep depression. Mm -hmm. And it was... It, it was thanks to my family that I made the recovery I did and that I'm moving here. Because if it were not for them, none of this would have been possible. I mean, they held on to hope when I had none left. And these are just some of the things they did for me. When I was first at the hospital, my brother Roman and my parents they actually created shifts. So somebody would be with me at the hospital 24 hours a day. Wow. It's so great that you had a family who were devoted enough to take shifts and take care of you. And, you know, I'm sure they had their own lives they had to lead and make a living and everything, but that, you know, we were so lucky to be able to have that. And uh, you can go to genuinelymaria.com and there's a short version of what we were talking about there, her story. But um, tell me about the transformation and the, the book pretty much at this point, what, how you got into writing a book about your, your experience. I had a life coach at the time, mm -hmm. and he suggested I write a book. And I'm thinking to myself, no freaking way, I'm not writing a book. <laughs> and he says, sure, you can write a book, just write an hour a day. And I'm thinking, that there's no way I'm doing this. But then he suggested well, why don't you write 20 minutes a day? And I thought, I can do that. I can do that. And that's how I wrote my book. 
and it was so, so cathartic. So I didn't even write it for a greater audience. It was basically just, it was like my own journal, you know? Mm -hmm. Well, show show us, show us the book. Show us the book. I'm sure you have the cut. Let's see what it I looks do. like. <laughs> I do. Hold it up there. There you go. Breaking into the light. Yes. That's awesome. So, is there is there a significance to that plant flower we have on there on the cover, or uh, it just kind of represents a new beginning, or what do you see that? I thought it was symbolic because it's a flower growing through concrete mm -hmm. no that makes it, sense that makes sense yeah. what you just described i mean you were basically under a concrete you know and you're able to break through that it's amazing when you sometimes you see that in real you know life experience you look down and there's this rock or stone or whatever and this beautiful colorful flower just appears out of nowhere like how, how do they find life existence down there to do that and to, it's a great right. representation that's awesome so what what can people get out of uh, reading your book? What 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 can they, what kind of feeling do they get when they read a book, your book? I think it's very hopeful. I take you with me on on my journey, basically, and the feedback I've gotten is that I saw myself in that, and I'm thinking to myself, hmm, that's interesting because not many people had a similar experience, and yet yeah. so much of the feedback I've gotten was. I saw myself in that, and I thought, yeah. wow. And I think it just, it brings people hope, hope yeah. that you can do it, whatever you're going through. Yeah, well, hope is one thing that we need a lot of in this world. I mean, there's so many things going on now, but also in the past and everything. So, you know, it's, I'm so amazing that little sign showed up for you because in the hospital that, you know, there's someone in there. Um, you know, your, your family members, your friends, being able to stay with you on this journey. And um, I mean, what would you like to say to them from your experience, your feelings about about them, back to them about, you know, how helpful they were to you? Well, um, if you've ever taken your family for granted, like I used to, like I did, you might want to rethink your relationships and what's really important in your lives. Right. No, it's, it's, um, there, there's people, friends like that, you know, sometimes it's, it's adversities that, you know, you find out how good your friends are and your family members are. Everyone has their own life and craziness and I got to do this, I got to do that. But when something like this happens, you know, it's, it's every, the world has to stop and people have to look at each other in a different way. And, uh, you know, it's it's a it's a true experience. So, um, what do we go into um, Wild Fit now and tell me what how that's helping to transform your life, to improve your life, and how it'll help others as well? Okay, let me tell you how I got to Wild Fit. I was doing something on YouTube when all of a sudden I saw a commercial for Wild Fit, and it's all about resetting your relationship with food. It's a nutrition thing. And I thought to myself, I don't need that. I'm already a vegetarian, and I've been playing with my dad for a number of years. Mm -hmm. So I don't need it. But something kept nudging me forward and telling me, go for it. It was like an intuitive something. And then I just thought to myself, okay, I'll enroll, and I'm just going to learn something new about a subject I'm already passionate about, something I already like. I enrolled three months later, I had your typical wins, which are, I was the way I was in high school again. I had much more clarity. My energy was off the charts and my skin, my nails, my hair, they were better. And I actually became more outspoken. But then the real magic began happening six months into living this lifestyle so after your experience you know i'm sure you were eating healthy and everything but how did uh, wild fit kind of how did you discover that and how that help you i was watching youtube one day and i saw a commercial for wild fit and i thought to myself i don't need this i'm already healthy and compared to the standards of 
health and the American diet. I was really healthy and I was working out. I was a vegetarian and I didn't think anything in me could or would change, but something just nudged me forward. It was like intuition mm -hmm. and I enrolled the program anyway. And lo and behold, three months after the program, I had your average wins, which were tons more energy. I was the weight I was in high school again. I had clarity of mind, which was amazing. And my skin was better, my nails, my hair was better. But then the magic really began to happen as I continued living this lifestyle and living the principles I had learned. One day, I recorded myself on a video and I'm watching it back and I go, oh my God, is that really me? <laughs> and I could not believe it. I heard my voice and what had always been Marilyn Monroe. I used to whisper because of the stroke. It was like a whisper, like a breathy whisper. All of a sudden I had bass behind my voice again. No. And I attribute that to the fact that my vocal cord, at least on the left side, had been paralyzed. And now through this program, it got better. And that was the, I think that was the biggest win of all for me because I had always been really, really hung up about my voice. Mm -hmm. So that was incredible to me. And it went from there. Then one day I went to the doctor and the physician's assistant, she took my blood pressure and she turned to me and says, 120 over 80. And I'm like, what? <laughs> she says, 120 over 80, it's normal. And I nearly fell out of my chair because I've never in my life, even before the stroke, had normal blood pressure. It was always 90 over 60, really, really low. And all of a sudden, here it was with normal blood pressure. Well, no, it's uh, so. So, what does that entail? Um, can you give us a, a capsulized version of what what it what is? Is it nutritional the way you eat, or supplements, or what is entailed with Wildfit? The program is all about food and resetting your relationship with food. There are no supplements, nothing to buy, mm -hmm. other than the food you buy at the supermarket. Okay. So, I mean, how do you get that information? I mean, it's, it's a coach. You, you coach people through that? Yes, yeah, so um, it's, it's a three-month program. And we do, we meet twice weekly. Do you meet in person or, uh, you know? We meet on Zoom. Okay. Sort of like we're meeting today. Yeah. <laughs> Virtually. We're not, we're not using Zoom, but, uh, you know, look like we're in the same room, sort of. But uh, my room's done differently than yours. But, uh, you know, uh, I matched, I, I found similar color by some, you know, in the same tone. So at least they were close there. Uh, so I so there's the, a modern technology. Yes, technology. When it works, it's wonderful, isn't it? Yeah. <laughs> so so what kind of responses are you getting from people that, that have gone through the pro program with you, the Wild State? Wow, I've, the transformations I get to experience are nothing short of amazing. Uh, I had one client who was scheduled for sciatic operation. And after eight weeks, his disc released and he was able to cancel the operation and didn't have to go through that surgery. He stopped actually wearing reading glasses, which I wow. couldn't believe. Because that's the only time, the one time that happened. I had heard of it happening, but it was the only time it happened to one of my clients. Mm -hmm. Also, I have a client, Edith, who is 85 years old, 85 years old, and she had been injecting insulin for 10 years. Maybe two months into the program, she no longer injects insulin. Her whole life is transformed. I mean, Maria, so, so, I mean, is a certain type of food, natural food, organic? I mean, like some some sort of little clues. I don't want to give out the whole, 
everything that's involved here, but you know, so people get a sense of what it is. Because if you say you just eat what you normally would, sort of, you, you said, you know, it's just the way you do it. So, like, what are some of the tips you can give right now that you know will inspire people to contact you and uh, you know perhaps get involved with the program? Well, I would say a couple of things. Number one, make sure you're hydrating because that's really, really important. So, I would say maybe drink eight glasses of water a day. If you're taller, yes, beautiful. I, I have a question for you. What if, like, you don't, you know, I like to drink, but not as much as the people tell you. So, how do you get yourself to drink and drink water? Uh, and, you know, a lot of water because, you know, I just think sometimes it's crazy. Also, I like the water with uh, some kind of bubbles in it, you know, so, <laughs> instead of just the, the regular water. So, I don't know if that makes a difference, but how do you get someone to just drink more water? You know what? I had the same issue when they told me, drink this much water. I was like, oh, I'm not thirsty. I'm not going to drink that much. And then I did it. Then I actually did it. And what I did was I would actually have to write stick figures by the mm -hmm. fridge to keep count of how much water I had. Yeah. Well, what's cool but, is like with watches these days, you could set for reminders. So it's like we're doing something that says, hey, drink water, drink water, stand up, walk around, you know. So it has those reminders because, you know, I, I do, you know, I go to different places, also spend a lot of time editing. So, you know, you edit, when you edit, you're concentrating. It's like reading or writing a long time. You don't realize suddenly two, three hours went by, but if something suddenly shakes your, you know, your wrist and go, you look down, it's a message. Oh, it said drink yeah. water. <laughs> but how much should you drink? Um, so the notes helped you, you said, to, to help you drink, um, you know, reminders, but how much is recommended that you drink? I would say six to eight glasses of water a day. Six to eight glasses? Yep. So six times eight ounces or 12 ounces? Yeah, if you're a taller person, bigger glasses. If you're a smaller person, <laughs> smaller glasses. <laughs> okay, not those big bottles <laughs> that people walk around with. Uh, so uh, what about the, the, the other food? So hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. I know it's that, one of that's them. That's really important. That's I'm going to put this up on the screen because it's supposed to be, we, we, we'll recap it later, but I think this is kind of cool because people can see. Just go over that list real quick that, so people can. Uh... Okay, so number one, you want to hydrate. Hydrate, hydrate, hydrate. Do it however you have to do it. Still water is best. If bubbles are going to make you drink the water, then do whatever, but still water is best. And um, flavor with a little bit of lemon juice if you have to. Just squeeze a few drops in. Number two, as you guys have been hearing from me, your life doesn't have to define who you are. It's what you make of what life throws at you. Make lemonade out of if the life gives you lemons, make lemonade, right? Yep. Number three, every species has a diet that allows for optimum health, and humans are different. When you think of a, a horse or a giraffe or any animal, every animal has a specific diet that allows them to thrive. Humans are the same. We're a species, Homo sapiens. And that's the species we have specific nutritional requirements that will allow us to thrive. And the further each species gets from its naturally evolved diet, the less health it will experience. And the best way I can illustrate that is by telling you a story. I, I took a little drink of water while we're, you were going through that, so. I love <laughs> Thank you very much for the inspiration. I will remember, uh, and I have my watch to always say, drink, drink water, drink water. That's excellent. <laughs> and you will notice the difference if you do it a couple of days consecutively. I noticed, for me, when I woke up in the morning, I was, my eyes went, they shot up, and I thought, oh, my God, I have so much energy. <laughs> wow. No, that's, that's great. So, um, you know, for someone who you know, never thought of doing something like this. They didn't think, you know, well, food is just food, whatever. I'm hungry, you got to eat. Um, what words of inspiration would you give them? You know, they heard your life experience, how it transformed you. 
and you know what would get them to to actually convince them to contact you and, and try something new to improve themselves just seeing the changes in my own life and knowing that it took me 15 years to get to 20 percent to get to 70 percent recovered and then after changing my diet i still recovered another 20 percent 15 mm -hmm. years after a stroke that tells me that there's something we don't know yeah no. there's something we don't know and something that's not allowing us to thrive that's true genuinelymaria.com is where you go to get lots of information about maria and the program well fit which improved her life immensely as you just heard also this is an audio podcast so if you're listening um and uh got all the information and you want to know what maria looks like or i look like or how wonderful <laughs> everything is here at casual conversations feel free to ch uh, check it out if you just want to listen that's great too because it's great information and um genuinelymaria.com so maria very tough question i ask people at the end of every one of these how is this experience here on casual conversations for you <laughs> It was fun. It was actually fun speaking to you and your audience. And it went by too quickly. Yeah, I know. Show them the book again. And I think the only way they can get the book right now, Breaking Into the Light. The only way they can get the book is actually, let me put it up. Uh, hold it up again. Let me put it up uh, full screen so people can actually, oh, that's me. Hello. Um, so the only way they can um, get that book is to actually meet you in person, correct? That or I can mail it to you. <laughs> if you can but mail it to you. <laughs> so you do presentations like, you know, in uh, places around New Jersey? Uh, I actually you... just began speaking this month for mm -hmm. the first time in public. Awesome. Yeah. What's, uh, it's an amazing story to share. You know, here, but I think in person's a lot more because people can uh, maybe share their own experiences, you know, add, um, you know, ask you questions, follow up questions. I'm sure they've had family members. I've had someone who had a um, aneurysm, you know, so what you were kind of explained, some that's what they said, like, like somebody hit them in the back of the head with something is just a shock. Um, and, um, you know, they have to have the operation and they're, they're doing well right now so uh, but i know a lot of people that didn't have such a good experience with that but your yours is just amazing that it it went from you not being able to speak and walk and everything and you're here you know it's it's thank you for taking the time to share your experience and uh, final words before we go from you go ahead it's up to yes. you <laughs> i'd love to hear from you visit my website genuinelymaria.com that's genuinely maria and food is not food. What we think of is just, I have to eat something because I'm hungry. It's so much deeper than that. It's about the messages your body is getting from the food you're eating. Yeah, it, it's great. Enjoy your life and hope I uh, see you around somewhere, New Jersey. We speak English, I'll invite you. Yes. Or you invite me and um thank you very much and uh talk to you soon thanks for thank being you. on casual conversation bye thank you for having me